Another new JavaScript API added as part of HTML5 was the Web Notification API. Now this is the ability for you to have little notifications that pop up in your browser. So if I load my page, there we go, I get this little title and there's some information showing up here. Disappears after a while. Now, we can control the contents of that little notification that pops up. If we're running it off of a mobile phone, we can control when it happens. We can attach these with service workers so that we can set them up to run in the future. We can have them have some script running in the background that launches them in the future. We can change the text, we can change the icon, we can trigger vibrations that come along with them. A whole bunch of stuff that we can do. So let's take a look at some of the basic code that we're working with and then we'll flush this out a little bit more. So my web page checks to see first of all if inside the window object we have something called notification with a capital N. So this is the object that will make the notifications pop up. It has a property called permission inside of it. Now this could be uh, denied or granted is the other result, but some browsers will have an undefined value at the very beginning or an unknown value at the very beginning. So because of that, what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that it's not explicitly set to denied. We're going to define two variables, a title and an options object. Inside the options object we're going to put a body and this is this piece of text that appears. So we get a title and some text. Here's the title and here's the text and we create new notification. So let n equal new notification. So if it's supported and if it's not denied in our browser then we're going to have a notification pop up. And we'll just uh, change this slightly just so you can see that it is the one that we just programmed. Hello from JavaScript and there's the title and this is the URL that it was coming from. Okay, simple enough. Now, that's with all the default options. Inside of here we can define a bunch of other things as well. We can also control when this thing is going to close. So if we wanted, we can do a set timeout and inside of here you can create a function and inside the function you can reference the notification or you want to make something that's going to run a little bit later we can say the close method that belongs to the notification object we're going to bind that and the notification object will be the context of this for this so this is creating a function that's going to run later so if I set in here 3000 that will be close notification after three seconds. That's what we're doing here. So refresh the page. There it is. One, two, three. Gone. Okay. So that's our script running it to make it disappear after three seconds. Other options that are available to us include things like data. You want to define an object so prop1 is the number 123, prop2 is going to be my name like this. Now inside of options we have a data parameter. So let's say I want to use that a little bit later on when this notification pops up. Alright, so n, that's our notification object. We can add an event listener. We're going to say when it shows. EV is our event. Console.log show and then we're going to write out ev.current target dot data. Or we could say data.prop1, data.prop2, whichever one we want. I'm just going to write the whole object out here. So notifications come with a number of included events. I have them up here in the comments. There's a click event, an error event, close event, and a show event. Show is probably the most useful for us for right now. It's when the notification appears, we're going to be getting the data that was set inside of here. So these could be values that were extracted from something else on the web page. Maybe the user filled out a form and you want to 
show that information back to him later on. There we are. There's the data that was set inside of the notifications. And when the show event happened, you can do the same sort of thing with a close and dot add event listener. When the close event happens inside of here, console.log, and we'll say we're going to close and ev.current target dot body or dot title. Any one of these properties is accessible to us. So there's the show when that appeared, and there's the close with hello from JavaScript, which was the body of our message. All right, so that's body, that's data. Uh, language, if you've got different ones, you can specify which language, even getting into the country code. So there we go, I'm setting it to Canadian English. Icon, you want to display an icon inside the notification where it pops up. We can do that. I have some PNGs inside of here. Um, I've got one called calendar lg.png. There we are. So now this icon is part of the options being applied to my notification. When I refresh, there it is, underneath there. So the calendar icon showing up. Um, if you're ever looking to reset these things, so right now notifications is set to allow. I can go back to global default, which is to ask. If I do that, it's going to say, hey, do you want to reload your page? Absolutely. So now it's not showing up. I refresh. It's not showing up. And that's because I have that default value, that undefined value. So I don't have the permissions right now. What I need to do is this. So if we want, we can change this and say, okay, if this is equal to granted, do all this, great. Otherwise, means our notification is denied or if it's that default value, request permissions. Now, request permission is actually working with a promise. So this is going to return a promise object to us, so therefore we can call then and run a function with the result. So we should get granted or denied showing up, depending on what we do. If I refresh, there we go. Here's request permissions. If I say block, denied. Refresh, nothing new. So I'm going to come down here to notifications, put it back to ask, okay. Reload my page. Allow. Granted. Good. Now, because I got this written out here, it meant that this code didn't run. What I really probably should do is take all of this and put it into a function. all of that code here inside of this function. So inside of here, all right, the result, we got it back. And I'm going to check to see at this point in time if this is set to granted, then I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to call this function, do notify. There we go. So now, when the page loads, if it's granted, I'll do that. If it's not, I'm going to ask for permission. And if it's set to granted, I will call this function again. So same code being called twice. There we go, down here. So now, when I refresh the page, there we are. I got this. If I put this back to ask again, reload my page prompts me. If I say allow, it does the same thing. It runs that code, shows me the notification. Okay, now the last, um, there are a few other um, parameters that we can put inside the options object. One of them is a timestamp. We can specify a timestamp. Now this isn't going to work in the browser, but if you're working with Android Chrome, 
the built-in Android browser, you're going to be able to get this. Um, and I think iOS now supports it as well. But this timestamp is going to allow us to set a time in the future where we want this to be showing up. So I'm going to call the static method now, which will give me the current timestamp. And that just means show it right now. So we'll take that and I'll add on 120,000 milliseconds, which is 120 seconds or two minutes. Now, I don't like to put it inside there like that, so I will create another variable here. There we go. So this is two minutes in future. And then that would do that. And you could also add vibrate. Now you can put in one value, or just like the vibration API, if you want. So for a tenth of a second or 100 milliseconds, vibrate off for 200, and then vibrate again for that long. Now in here, it's not really going to do anything for us, uh, but we're not getting any errors. That's the important thing here. Even though these aren't supported, they just get ignored. So that's the uh, notification API. Um, I will put this in a code gist and leave a link to that in the comments. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below. And as always, thanks for watching.